The World Marathon major season always ends on the first Sunday in November. It's the most challenging course of the series, but the crowd support is unmatched. It's my favorite race for chasing the pros and finding my friends, so let's hop on a plane and head east. This is a runner's weekend at the New York Marathon. What's going on? Just made it into New York. It's going to be a crazy busy weekend here for the marathon. Already I took care of some first things first business, checked into the hotel, got myself a slice, and now I'm going to head over to Under Armour and make some pasta. When you're thinking about marathons, you're thinking about carbs. And pasta is definitely one of the runner favorite ways of loading up. Under Armour set this media event at Aunt Jake's, a place that is part restaurant and part pasta classroom. The ingredients were laid out on long workbenches, along with images of the ingredients of some of Under Armour's best performance running product. The space was cozy, welcome, and intimate. 2022 New York Marathon champion Sharon Locati was there to talk to us about how she was feeling for the race in just two days, and it was fantastic to hear from her this way. I've always been impressed with her achievements in running, and now I'm a Sharon fan. All right, that was really great to be able to hear from Sharon McKady. I've never had a chance to really hear from her like that before, so that was fantastic. Thanks Under Armour for the invite. Now I'm gonna head back to the hotel. Let's go find Drew, get in some miles. How you feeling, Drew? I'm feeling good. Nice. I'm glad that it's getting, the temps are going down for the running stuff. Yeah, it'll be good for them. Looks like there's a race happening, an unsanctioned race. <laughs> so that was fun. Ended up running into the Lost Boys relay race. Saw a lot of friends down there. Chatted for a while. Now we're gonna wrap up this run, head back to the hotel, get changed up real quick, and then head over to the endorphins party. Endorphins is a run club that has exploded in popularity. With chapters in nine cities and a strong cheer squad presence at just about every race, you've likely seen them somewhere before. This year, they've set up shop in the Shopify space, which is where Bandit had its pop-up last year. And on this evening, they were having their New York Marathon weekend kickoff party. From Endorphins, Drew and I decided to head over to the Kraft after party. There, Kraft was unveiling their latest carbon plated shoe, the Kype Pro. A lot of people there had just raced in the shoe as there had been a Take the Bridge event earlier that night. They had prototypes on display, and I was able to get a look at the unique carbon plate. There was a food truck outside the spot and so many friends to catch up with inside. And then afterwards, Drew and I decided to make one last stop before calling it a night. Oh, 
good uh, morning. It is about 8 a.m. in the morning on a Saturday here in New York. Today is a big day. Let's start it with a shakeout with Runner. I am walking past the Believe in the Run event. It's a long line already. I'm trying to sneak by undetected. I don't know if that'll happen. So. <laughs> What's going on guys? How are ya? Hey! hey. Runna is a training app and they're pretty big in Europe and the UK. But they're now trying to make a big push for the US. I'll be using the app to train for the half marathon in Houston and this weekend was the official kickoff of the partnership. Guys, wow! Runna official shakeout for New York Marathon 2024! <laughs> Once we got outside, Runna had everyone go through a quick warm up. We got the group photo, and then we were off. A lot of congestion with the end of the dash to the finish 5K going on and kind of intersecting with our route here. But now that we're in the park, Spreading out a little bit. It's a beautiful morning. I'm loving the run. The halfway point was at the reservoir, and we stopped there to make sure we had everyone. We took another group photo, and then we headed back to the run of space. We are back into some of the congestion by the finish line. Almost done. Almost back. Are you are you run? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 we're fine. Oh, sorry. It, there's so much congestion yeah. here, you know. So it's oh fine. So um, you can keep so, going. I didn't know. No, we're almost done. We're just a little bit further down. Run up. Run up. Just finished getting some breakfast with Chase and Drew. But now, Drew and I are gonna head back further south and go check out the Coffee Club podcast. Is this the way? I don't know if this is the way. You have way. Drew did take us the right way and the subway got us to the on pop-up pretty quick. But we still got to the podcast a few minutes late, so it was already a packed house when we arrived. I've been listening to the Coffee Club podcast for a while, and it was good to be able to see a live taping. They had trivia, Q&A from the audience, and even a little bit of heckling of the OAC rookies. It was a fun show. Downstairs, there was a bit of running shoe history from on, which is the kind of thing that I always love to nerd out on and then a chance to watch the Shoemaker robot and even try on a demo pair. That's it for the on store. That was pretty amazing. That robot's cool. I welcome our robot overlords as long as they make good shoes. Now we're gonna head over to Bandit. I think a lot of people forget that Bandit is still a very young apparel brand. I have been to every New York Marathon pop up they've done, and that tradition only goes back to 2022. Welcome you guys to our uh, first pop-up. They've come a long way in that amount of time. And this year, they're releasing a collab collection with a major running shoe brand. And personally, I love the Runner Hiragana theme.
But race day morning started early for me with a wake-up time of about 4.30 a.m. I did a big a digging to find out which hotel is the athlete hotel, and I wanted to try and get some paparazzi-style footage of the athletes as they boarded their buses to Staten Island. But like in Chicago and in Boston, the athlete hotel is also a hotel for a lot of marathon participants. So it's a pretty busy atmosphere in the morning. People I know both personally and professionally kind of all over the place. The athletes though, seem to be in really good spirits. Most of them seemed chipper despite the early hour, but they were just very relaxed. After the athletes left, I had a couple hours to put together a pre-race reel, and then I met Drew for breakfast. Okay, we've got off the train, got a little bit of time before the athletes get in here. Let's get into position. We started the morning in Brooklyn as we always do, and this is my favorite spot to watch the race, as it's early enough that all the pros are still bunched up together, but it's also relatively less crowded, so I can do my thing running along with the athletes to film them. I put together a separate race video that is more of a contemporaneous account of everything that happened that day. So here, what I'll do is I'll give you a bit more of the behind the scenes. Now with the way that the race waves are staggered, we always see the women first and then the pro men. But in between, there is the MasterCard secret wave. My friend Ashley was in that wave, as was Fino, who was getting his sixth star while running in a tuxedo of all things. And then there was Alexi Pappas, who is another perennial runner in this wave. After we saw the men, Drew and I had to hustle to catch the train. Last year, we got super lucky by connecting to the Express 6 train that took us up to see the runners at mile 19 with just a moment to spare. This year though, we were trying to get to 59th and see the pros right after Queensboro Bridge at mile 16. We knew the women would be far too fast for us to see them there, but we thought we might have a chance for the men. But the train took longer than we expected, and the men were already gone before we were out of the subway. Fortunately, we had Chase on the team to grab footage for us at a couple of spots along the course. He saw the pros coming up first ab, and then again in the park near the end of the race. Meanwhile, Drew and I had to run across Manhattan and then navigate through security and the paths of Central Park to get to the bleachers of the East Grandstand. There, we had really good access to see the athletes as they came to the finish. And because most people who buy East Grandstand tickets do so to see their friends and family finish the race and not to see the pros, there was ample space there. There's also a private set of porta potties there too, which Drew and I took advantage of after seeing the pros come in and before we headed back out on the course to find our friends. Now, there's a special magic to the New York Marathon. The first is that even though this race is gigantic and this year's race would end up being the largest marathon ever, you can usually find your friends. Just a couple of weeks ago, I had loaded up a bunch of friends into my tracker for the Chicago Marathon and I somehow ended up missing almost all of them. In New York though, you'll end up finding everyone you were looking for and you'll also run into people you didn't even know were racing. Like my friend Nicholas, who is one of the founders of Chicago Run Crew 3 Run 2. And even though you don't plan it, you'll also find friends along the course that are always cheering. Like Hella, who I first met a few years ago while we were each cheering for friends along the course of the New York Marathon at mile eight in Brooklyn. Pro tip though, Cheering for the New York Marathon is an endurance event unto itself. Make sure you eat. Drew and I usually stop by this Shake Shack that is on the course. And as we're eating, if we see that one of our friends is about to come through on the tracker, one of us stays in the restaurant with the food while the other goes out to cheer and we take turns. This year, I was able to find Chloe, who is a runner who lives in the next town over from me out in the suburbs of Chicago. We never actually met in person, but we each noticed that we sometimes have some familiar looking backgrounds in our running videos, and that's how we started connecting. This was Chloe's first marathon, and she did such a good job while also raising a bunch of money for charity. The last bit of magic that New York offers is the final finishers. 
even though aid stations may have to shut down and the slowest racers may have to move to the sidewalks as roads re to car traffic, the finish line itself waits for every runner to complete the mission. More than 10 hours after the last wave starts in Staten Island, there are still runners crossing the line in Central Park. And the New York Marathon keeps the cameras rolling, the lights are still on, and crowds line up to give these final finishers a proper welcome. Ted Metellus, the race director, who is there to welcome the first finisher of the race, he also welcomes the last finisher as they cross the line too. This year, that last finisher was Super Mario, a 74-year-old Italian man who finished his 35th New York Marathon. Ted gave me a hug as I finished my marathon in Berlin and completed my six stars a couple months ago. So I can tell you when I see Ted hug someone else at the end of the race, that Ted gives out the best hugs. And let me tell you another New York marathon secret. Inside the pouch that Ted wears is a packet of wet wipes. And as Super Mario was getting photographed and about to be interviewed for TV, Ted made sure to first wipe the sweaty crust from Mario's mouth so he would look his best in his television interviews. At a time where maybe your faith in the goodness of people may be a bit rattled, know that the people you see here are good people. Know that empathy still does exist. Thank you, New York, for this reminder. We need it now more than ever.